In Cloud Foundation, available cloud capacity is allocated for hosting workloads by creating workload domains. Here we see a list of servers that have recently been added to the Cloud Foundation inventory. These servers represent a pool of available capacity. We will allocate four of these servers for hosting workloads by creating a new workload domain. Navigating to workload domains, we see the manager domain that was created during BringUp. This domain is currently comprised of four hosts, configured into a single vSphere cluster. Navigating to the manager domain's vCenter server instance, we can view additional details about the manager domain from the vSphere client. Note the three VMs currently deployed in the manager domain the vCenter server and NSX manager instances for the manager domain, and the SDDC manager. Returning to the SDDC manager, we will now create a new workload domain. Navigate back to workload domains, click add workload domain, and select VI workload domain. Begin by specifying the principal storage type for the domain, vSAN in this example. Give the domain a name, and choose whether you want to create a new SSO domain or if you want to join the existing management SSO domain. We will join the management SSO domain. By default, the SDDC manager uses VLCM images to manage the ESXi host updates. If you prefer to use the older baseline approach, you can override the default setting by clicking the checkbox under lifecycle management. Next, Provide a name for the vSphere cluster. Because we chose to use VLCM images, we also need to select the image to use. We then provide the hostname and password values for the new vCenter server instance. Observe how the SDC manager uses DNS to do a forward lookup of the provided hostname in order to determine the IP address to assign to the new vCenter server instance. As this is the first virtual infrastructure workload domain in our Cloud Foundation environment, we are required to deploy a new NSX fabric. As such, we also need to provide values for the new NSX manager appliances. Here again, the SDDC manager uses DNS to determine the corresponding IP addresses. We also need to provide passwords for the NSX admin and audit accounts. Since we are using vSAN, we next need to configure the failures to tolerate and specify whether we want to enable vSAN deduplication and compression. Next, we select the host from the free pool that we will assign to this domain. With vSAN, a minimum of three hosts are required. However, we will select four hosts to provide an extra level of redundancy. We then configure the vSphere distributed switch. Here, we can choose to use the default switch configuration or to create a custom switch configuration. With the default switch configuration, a single distributed switch will be created based on two NICs. On the switch, distributed port groups will be created for the management, vSAN, and vMotion traffic types. With the custom switch configuration, you are able to create multiple distributed switches. Custom switch configurations require additional NICs on each host and are typically used to isolate the different traffic types across separate physical NICs. For example, you could assign vSAN or NSX overlay traffic to one switch while the remaining traffic would be assigned to the other switch. In this example, the hosts have two NICs, so we will use the default switch configuration. Here we see the switch name that will be assigned to the distributed switch along with the NICs that have been assigned, and the traffic types that will be configured. We also need to configure a VLAN ID for the NSX overlay traffic. Click Edit, scroll down to the NSX overlay traffic type, and provide the required VLAN ID. Acknowledge the change. At the license screen, we provide the required NSX, vSAN, and vSphere license keys. At the review screen, we review the workload domain configuration. When ready to deploy, click Finish. A workflow is initiated to create the new domain. 
It typically takes around 90 minutes to create a workload domain. Here we see the workload domain creation has completed successfully. Expanding the workflow, we can see the subtasks that were executed to create this domain. These tasks include deploying a new vCenter server instance, configuring the vCenter inventory, adding the ESXi host to the inventory and configuring them into a vSphere cluster, configuring vSAN on the cluster, configuring the virtual distributed switch and associated port groups, deploying the NSX manager appliances, and preparing the vSphere cluster for NSX. Here we see the domain is now shown in the STDC manager. Selecting the new domain, we can view additional details. Here we see the four hosts that we assigned and that these four hosts have been configured into a vSphere cluster. Under the services tab, we are able to access links that will connect us to the vSphere client and NSX manager UI. When we created the new domain, we chose to join the manager SSO domain. As such, this domain has been configured with enhanced link mode. Because of this, when connecting to the vSphere client, we are able to see the vCenter server instances for both the manager domain and our new virtual infrastructure workload domain. Expanding the manager domain inventory, notice as part of the domain creation, several new VMs have been deployed. These include the vCenter server and NSX manager instances for the new domain. Expanding the vCenter inventory for the new domain, we see the vSphere cluster with the four host. Navigating to storage, we see the vSAN data store that was configured for the cluster. Under networking, we see the distributed switch that was configured along with the management, vMotion, and vSAN port groups. Returning to the SDC manager, click the link to connect to the NSX manager UI. As this is a new NSX instance, we don't see any objects in the NSX inventory. However, navigating to System, under Fabric, selecting Host, we see that all four hosts have been configured for NSX. In this video, we saw how private cloud capacity is quickly allocated for hosting workloads by creating workload domains. To learn more about Cloud Foundation, visit the Cloud Foundation Resource Center at core.vmware.com.